Okay, so let's take a look here. Um, and let's add an A torus not. Okay. And we're going to say A torus not. Okay. So we want to make sure that that's there. And okay. Let's add the position here. And I'll make that equal to 0, 0, negative 3. Okay, and there you go. This is a torus knot. This is a very standard 3D um, image or a 3D primitive uh, that you see pretty much um, in a lot of different 3D pro modeling programs. So it looks pretty cool. I think it looks awesome. Let's add in a color. So let's add in our R G R G well R G B values. So let's maybe say you know six 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 red E E um, E E green and then zero zero blue right. So that gives us a nice green color. But I'm going to give it a six six again. So there we go. It gives us a different color green. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, and yes, I think that looks interesting. So there's a couple things um, that we need to look at this here. Um, so again, let's look at the wireframe because it's a little bit uh, more interesting. Make that equal to true. And uh, let's look at that there. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, this might come out better if it was an orange color, but eh, we'll, we'll keep it green for now. Um, so there's lots to to work with here so um, the arc so if we make that equal to 180 right um, you can see um, that or if I make it 270 here it will change it up a little bit but let's take a look at some of the other items here so we also have um, the uh, the P and the Q value right so if we change this up so for example if I type in P right and the if I the default for P is 2 so if we do 1 you can see it changes the knot and by 4 you know it you can get into some interesting shapes <laughs> oh that's interesting so um, so basically that's what that is. So you can change it up there. Let's make it. Let's make it three because that was. Let's, see, let's just make it two again. So that's the default value. And the last and the second one is Q. So if we change up our Q value, uh, you can see that it's three, two, one, four, five, and you can get to some really interesting shapes. Right. And you can also see if you kind of look at that, it's the the mesh seems to deform a little bit. So whenever you get, see if you look like if I kind of just zoom in right here. Okay, so whenever you see this and this weird shading, it means that the mesh is being deformed in a bad way. So let's zoom out again. So in order to fix that, there's a couple things that we can do. So the first things first uh, is we can add in these segments. Um, segments radial and the way to fix this is to just essentially add in more geometry so the radial segments um, you know we have the default value is 8 so if we try in 16 right um, or 32 uh, it doesn't quite fix it right now um, but if we were to change the wireframe um, <laughs> and equal to false or true actually there we go. You can see that some of the mesh is deformed. So let's go ahead and let's add in the other one here, which is segments tubular. Okay, and segments tubular um, is 100, so let's add in 200 there. And actually, we probably need a lot more. So if we put that back to false, you'll see that it's a little bit smoothed over. So as you increase some of the complexity of this, you might need to increase the segments. But this is a lot of, like, that's quite a bit here. We could probably add in more. We could probably actually make that closer to a 1,000. 
right? And you can see that is starting to look quite a bit smoother, okay? So you can see that that looks a lot smoother here. And I believe, what was the Q value before? I think it was six, right? You can see that that's a lot smoother than if I, I believe it was 100. You can see how, um, so let's zoom in. So you can see how this doesn't look very good. It's kind of jagged. And you can see that the shading on the actual torus isn't very good. So if you want to ever get rid of that, you know, we could add in 1,000 here. And I would normally do 10,000, but let's do 2,000 here. And you can see it's quite a bit better. The shading is a lot more smooth. And this is this is a lot more smooth. Now, by make, by changing the P's and the Q value, you're, you're twisting this in a weird way. So sometimes um, you might not get the results you're looking for, right? Uh, sometimes the twisting just might be too much. And in this particular case, what's happening is that the mesh is uh, colliding with one another. Uh, so you're not going to get too much of a difference uh, with that there. All right. And, and by the way, um, if you do this, um, uh, if you do this, for instance, uh, with materials, we haven't gotten into that yet, but once you get into materials, then this whole thing becomes a lot uh, a lot more complicated. So again, the torus knot is not something you're going to be using uh, a lot, it, but I am highlighting some of the bigger parts with any kind of 3D object. The more complexity you get, the more segments and geometry you need. Things that fold into one another are generally not best practice, and if it looks jagged or the shading's off, then it's not going to work. Uh, as well, and it's gonna it's gonna not be a good uh, job. So this so this is so this is something that you can generate something that's interesting, but generally you would not be using this uh, in any way uh, uh, shape. Well, you, you probably wouldn't be using this in in a project.